Right, what I'm going to show you now is me removing this panel and how you can get access to the inside of the air post, which you can't get to from the outside. Um, I'm going to just quickly show you how to remove this panel for those that may not know. There is a plastic um, clip at the back. It just pushes in. It's a bit like a fir tree type clip almost. Um, what you can do is squeeze your fingers on top of the carpet and ease your fingers behind the plastic and gently um, tug it towards you until it pops. Don't lose the clip. Once you've done that, get your fingers at the bottom, just like I have there. Just give it a gentle tug and it'll pop away. You don't go yanking it at this point because there's a, a wire for the boot release. If you have the boot release fitted, gently work it away and just gently pull the bonnet pull just to give yourself a little bit more space. As I say, there is a, a wire, a couple of wires, sorry, for the boot release mechanism. Just give it a small squeeze, slide it off, set that to one side. Now, once you've got to this point, you can pull the carpet back and you can see the various earth points and things like that. There are all your earths. Once you've got to this point, you'll actually see, I'll just tuck that wire up out of the way. You'll actually see this black rubbery type plastic grommet. What you can do is, it is quite difficult to start with. We've already had these out a number of times, so they come out quite easily. Pop that out, as you can see there, it's quite a decent size. With that removed, you can actually see into the back side of the air post. You can't see inside there from the outside of the car unless you remove it this way from the inside. Now, I'll bring you in for a closer look. Hopefully, you'll be able to now be able to see what I'm on about. Hopefully. Um, turn my torch on, so I don't need that one. Right, so inside there, let's move some wires. You can actually see where we've actually already done the welding um, before. There, that is the bottom of the jacking point. So that, uh, that there is the bottom of the jacking point. And inside that is all the backside, the inner, inner sill. That hole there that you can just see at the bottom, that is the hole that's on the centre sill going to the outer sill. And it separates both of them. This is why you've got to do it from the inside because your drainage holes on the outside only gain you access to the outer sill skin. The rot, uh, the rot that occurs, occurs in this area and when it occurs it actually goes upwards and right up into all this area here which then is not great it's a lot of work um and by the time you can see it on the outside it's uh, it's a lot of work um i can include some photos in the video um just to show you how much work is involved um but as it's as it stands that's where we're at and what we're now going to do is put cavity wax in. If you just bear with me a second. There we go. You can use whatever brand of cavity wax takes your fancy. I'm a little bit of a cheapskate, I suppose. I'll just keep using this. Um, it's quite cheap from our local motor factors. Um, it's readily available, straight off shelf, and we normally apply it at least once a year. Um, it, it's cheap enough to do that when you go up for anything else, like you know, car cleaning and stuff or spare parts. Just grab a can, um, and that's kind of it. That's all we do. Um, but whatever you whatever you fancy using at that point, these luckily come with lancers. Straighten that out. Now, we have already done this car with Dinitrol already earlier this year, um, just before the MOT. What we're now going to do is feed that in as far as you possibly can, right to the very bottom. Your aim here really is just to get it everywhere. Just not all over your interior. Mm. A little bit of condensation in between panels and things like that. This is what causes it, but the big main cause of it all is not having mud flaps fitted. 
and get it through that little hole that little hole there that you can see is actually for the clip that secures the plastics that go here just get it everywhere it don't matter where it goes just try not to get it in your eyes there we go there we go right now i'm going to show you Ugh, just get rid of that right now what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the other one because believe it or not there's various ways that you can get wax into the sills so move the camera up. so there this is just a little bitumen pad you can actually put a hole into those or you can just take them back off um realistically you can we do that so we can actually get access to the inner sill section so you can get all this area cavity waxed which it's just a form of protection at that point i'm just trying to find where the ones that we've already removed are um because we have already taken a couple of these off i don't really want to go taking any more off unless i really need to so da -da -da. Take that off and prep ready. There we go. Let's pop that off. And now I'll show you some of the others. So inside there, this is the bottom of the seatbelt reel. These just pop off. Just be careful when you're refitting them. These can bend if you don't get them located into the little slots there that, that secure them. There, there, there at the bottom. Um, like I say, you can end up bending them. You can see where this one's already gone. A lighter shade where it's obviously been bent already like that um, so it's just take your time with them just try to line up the clips now if you look down at the bottom of the sill section there hopefully you'll see what looks like it's about expanding foam and black plastic that is a waffle pad um, they're normally removed when you have sill uh, welded at the rear where rear jacking points normally rot out they normally just take them out to be fair they're not really needed um they're just a bit of an annoyance to be quite honest when you need to do welding um it, personally i do try and get wax into that area just to try and prevent any corrosion um, they don't normally rot in middle don't these cars to be fair in middle at sill section but if you're in here anyway for how long it takes you may as well you have got one there and again same place on opposite side i'm not sure if i'll be able to show you but there you can see that it's not really going to do a great deal even if you got wax into there but for how much it costs and how easy it is hopefully just obviously try not to get it on your seatbelt reel don't really need a lot in this area because as i say it's not really going to go anywhere you can't really get it to places so just anywhere really at this point just to get a little bit of wax into things these aren't the main eye impact points anyway there we go that'll do for that area so what i'm now going to do is move the seat forward right now those bitumen pads were removed see we removed the bitumen pads before we fitted the interior so now interior is in i might actually have to remove some of the other bitumen pads so i can get access to it i think that's what i'm gonna have to do so just bear with me a second as i say do excuse the mess um it is an everyday working car with kids getting in it and things it will get overed out later on today to be honest if weather improves it's a little bit grey and a bit murky and misty so right so what i'm going to do is just put a small hole into there you can take them off these it, they don't really do much to be fair they were just you covered up for covered up at the factory there we go. Uh, just make a small there. hole it's quite easy then all we do go stick it wand in as far as you possibly can feed it right the way in just leave yourself enough to keep the can upright if you're using aerosols slowly pull it back as you're doing it Uh, 
there we go and then because that went over to the right you could hear it in the panel I'm now going to try and get it the other way yep there we go there we go right that's that done I'll put all this back when the video's finished it's not too difficult um, once you've got to that point you've then got more of these little pads that, like I say just knock a hole into it you have got got them you've got one there you've got one there you've got you basically just look out for them put a hole into it just do what I've done that will actually coat the inside of all this section you've coated the air post once you've done, um, done it from the inside like I've just just shown um, at the front because you've just basically got the back side of the jack pad in fact you can actually see where it's coming from there's the drainage hole now if wax can come out of that drainage hole it means it'll come it'll go into the the drainage hole as well so right there should be a drainage hole but we haven't put that in to stop it from actually getting up it may sound a little bit silly but we have actually done that when we've replaced this whole sill section um, we haven't put the drainage hole back in you would normally have a drainage hole somewhere around that area there um, without mud flats fitted we have found that we have actually had that plastic panel out on the inside water actually gets sprayed up not a lot but enough um, to start rotting out the um, air post like I've just shown, in, shown um, where we sprayed the wax and after so long it just rots it out and it creates mayhem um, so yeah on this occasion we haven't actually put the drainage hole there so water can't get into it so at the moment we've fitted the mud flaps as well just to deflect it away and looking at that as you can see where mud tracks and sprays as we do have farms around where we live you can actually see that whole section is quite clean so it means that even if the drainage hole had been there it wouldn't have actually gone in because it's been deflected because of the mud flap being fitted which is a good thing um so you don't end up with spray going up inside the air sill uh, air post sorry these are just cheaper mud flaps that you get off amazon for about 10 quid for four of them some of them come with screws some don't we just normally go and buy the u-clips and screws to match that fit and all you do is just attach it to the um original rubber sill end trim that you can see there it looks greasy because that's exactly what we've done we've cleaned all that area up um we've cleaned all that area we've then put just general purpose grease onto it on the inside so where it's touching the metal work the, the body work basically it's not going to trap moisture there because it, it's going to slow it down getting in it's going to slow water down getting in um because the grease is there so it's just another form of protecting it that's that's the main thing when you actually have the arch liner out you can actually pull the bottom of the arch liner out you've got a baffle bag it's like foaming inside a bag you pull that out and you've got like a shelf about that area and then this acts as another shelf and that itself can collect mud and all sorts of other cack and it basically just holds moisture there and causes rot as well that's one of the reasons why they also rot out in that area all spray all muck all grit stones things like that it all just rots it out um which isn't a bad thing because not a welded on wing they just bolt on um but where you can avoid it, it's best to but yeah once you've cleaned all that out you can put cavity wax into that area wax or whatever you prefer Put the arch liner back on and then it's the case of fitting these they are quite long when you first buy them that's why it looks like it's been cut because we just basically stuck grinder through it but whatever you want to use to cut it just cut it down so it's not going to catch as much as the originals um but it's just there to protect the original um drainage all from spray going up into it um especially in winter and things like that when you see them on motorway um cars up motorway are being driven the spray that hits the front of the sill it's quite a lot um so yeah um with that done um that's kind of it so this is only a short video as i say but what you can do is get up into the drainage hole um which i'm going to struggle to show you without the tripod i'm afraid um, but you can put the lance into that hole spray that'll only go into this area then the outer section um to get to the inner section you would have to do that from inside car as i've previously shown um that's that's pretty much all there is um to do but you've got i've nearly got a, a little small drainage hole at the front it looks like that you've normally got one at the front 
you've got one there, and then you've got one there, and there's another one there, and there's normally one at the back there. Um, take the jack pads out if you can, spray it into there, spray it up inside the drainage holes as well. Um, once you've done that, just make sure the drainage holes do run clear, they're not um, clogged up with wax, because any moisture you do, in, you do get in there, you want to make sure that it will actually come out. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, so there are various other places that you can also spray the wax into. Um, but I think that'll do for the, the moment. Um, it's enough protection, as I say. Um, to be quite honest, it is enough protection. Um, just bear with me a second, sorry. So when you take this arch liner out, there is actually a rubber grommet right about there at the end of the sill. You can actually carefully pull that out and that again will give you access to a section of the inner sill, not there, sorry, so there. Um, once you've actually gotten to that point, you can get, then get the lance into that section as well. Um, there's also a one at the back. Um, again, in fact, I can show you on this one. Hopefully, just pop that free. There. There, it acts like a shelf, which I'm hoping that'll come out on the video. Um, it acts as a bit of a mud shelf. It collects all sorts of mud and gunk and things like that to say it's only we're only done about three or four months ago you can already see where it's already starting to collect bits of silt and sand and rubbish off road now if i can show there there is a rubber grommet just there on this one we've actually sealed it up because to be quite honest with you it's not going to rot out anytime soon with what we've managed to do um, but there is normally a grommet there you can pop them out and again, get the lance up that end. So you're going to get cavity wax into that end as far as you possibly can up the length of the sill. You're then going to do the jack pads. You've then got the drainage holes in various places. Um, and like I say, you've then got the air post hole at the bottom, which hopefully, come on. Sorry. There we go. You can actually see where the wax has gone. Um, that gets right down into all that section there. Um, get it, just get it everywhere basically, blather it up, there's a little hole that I made, there is another one just down there, which again, just make a small hole in it, just enough to get the lance through, um, with that, that's pretty much it, um, um, this is my brother's Rover 75 Toro, um, it's a 54 plate with 140,000 miles on the clock, um, I'm going to use this one as a reference, um, so I've just taken the plastic trim off the kick panel what I'm now going to do is I'm actually going to try and show that a car that's always had mud flaps fitted don't suffer with rot in the same way that a car that's not had them fitted like the previous car that I've just shown don't suffer with the same level of rot so this is a car that's always had mud flaps fitted with relatively the same mileage and as you can see there there is no rot it's never been welded um, that is just muck what looks like muck. Just a bit of dirt. I'll try and wipe it off. Yeah. So as you can see there, the inside is like brand new. Uh, you can see right to the very bottom. I'm just going to edge my phone in. I don't think I'll be able to. can see there there's absolutely no rot or anything in that area um, that is the inside of the air post and yeah as I say cars that have always had mud flaps fitted generally have rusty wings where it's been rubbing over years and things but not all of them there we go you can see right at the bottom and that there with the small bigger hole with the smaller hole is the back side of the jack pad the old jacking point there you go Try get to focus there right. as you can see these have always been fitted the front mud flaps have always been fitted on this car and that's kind of it. They do, they do sort of grab a bit of a bit of rubbish and it actually holds it there, which you can see behind the mud flap. But for the damage it can actually do, not having mud flaps fitted, um, 
it can be quite bad as i say i will include some photos of the silver car just there um the 03 plate this is like i said a 54 plate um that car had 150,000 miles on it when both the front outer sills rear sills inner sills um ended up being welded um and yeah it's a monumental amount of work to be quite honest it's a amount of work that most people probably wouldn't go to to be quite honest when you lay it on the driveway and you can actually see the steering wheel um while laid on the floor it's you know you know it's no small task um probably shouldn't have done that amount of work really on a car of that age and value i suppose really but we did it anyway but um yeah cars that have always had mud flaps fitted generally are like that on the inside ones that have be had them taken off years ago or that have never had them fitted generally have rot up there into that area up the air post on the inside and it is a structural point at car which in a crash the wheel does go backwards into that area and it's meant to be deflected away once it's that area but if it's all rotten where's it going to go it's not something i'd want to find out right Here's the pla uh, platinum. Here's the white gold um, 75. Um, again, this one's all, always had mud flat fitted from brand new. As you can see, it does wear the paint out where the original ones rub. That you can just see starting with a little bit of surface rust there. That will sort that out. Um, but as you can see, it does rub. It does collect muck behind it. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that in the video. Um, but I'd sooner that than a silly amount of work now this is a 51 plate um diesel automatic this one's got 89,000 miles on it um i'll just carefully remove that trim panel if i can there we go pop pop there it comes Right, and that there is the grommet that you wanted to remove. That one. Right, okay. I'm just going to take a quick look at this one. Again, as you can see, again, just a bit of muck in there, but nothing too bad at all. Um, but there's no rot in that area. Right down like I did earlier. There. There we go. Again, that's the bottom of the jack pad, which Just remove the jack pad from the outside of the car. Just see if we can get it in the right place again. Mm. Come on. There. There. You can see my finger. So it shows just how far you can actually get the wax in these cars, which is not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, as I say, the rot can go up into that area there just where I'm showing you and extend all the way up onto the inside right up behind that panel and become quite severe and it's not a small amount of work to sort to be quite honest with you most people would just scrap the car 